Welcome to Electron Line. Our next example of how to use or utilize the quadratic formula, we're going to end up with an irrational solution. Of course, you normally wouldn't know that if you start out, and especially if it's a problem on a test, I won't tell you ahead of time, oh, you're going to end up with an irrational solution. I just want to show you an example of how it actually works when you do end up with an irrational solution. Now, when we look at our equation, notice we don't have everything over on one side equal to zero. So before you start determining what a, b, and c are, you want to move everything over to one side first. So you want to rewrite this as 4x squared plus 12x minus 5 is equal to 0. And now you can determine what your a, b, and c's are. So a is equal to the numerical coefficient of the square term, which is 4. b is equal to 12. And c is equal to a negative 5. Notice that if you didn't move the 5 first, you might make a mistake and write c as a positive 5. You don't want to do that. Next, you're going to plug those numbers into the quadratic formula. So you end up with x is equal to minus b, which is minus 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 12 squared, minus 4, times a, which is 4, times c, which is a minus 5. And the whole thing divided by 2 times a, and a is equal to 4, so 2 times 4. And now we simplify that one step at a time. So x is equal to minus 12 plus or minus the square root of 12 squared, which is 144. Notice minus times a minus makes that a plus. 4 times 4 is 16 times 5, that makes that 80, all divided by 2 times 4, which is 8. All right. That gives us x is equal to minus 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 plus 80. That would be 224 all divided by 8. So continuing on over here, <clears throat> can we simplify the square root of 224? Hmm. Let's see here. How about this? 12 times 12, 24. Well, I'm going to factor out some things. So let's take the number 224. And let's divide it by 2. That gives us half of that, which is 112, divided by 2, which is equal to 56, divided by 2, which is equal to 28, divided by 2, which is equal to 14, divided by 2, which is equal to 7. So that means that 224 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is uh, 32 times 7, or 16 times 14. So 14 times 16, that's 160, that's 200, that's 224, that's correct. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to write this as x is equal to minus 12 plus or minus the square root of 16 times 24 all divided by 8. Why did I do that? Because that way I can take the square root of 16, so I can write this as x is equal to minus 12 plus or minus the square root of 16 is 4, times the square root of 24, all divided by 8. Oh, no, 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 not 24. That should be 14. I was starting to say something is wrong here. 14, 14. There we go. That's better. All right. Now what I can do is I can factor out a 4. So I can write this x is equal to 4 times minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 14 divided by 8. Now, of course, that simplifies, that becomes a 1, that becomes a 2. So if x is equal to minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 14, all divided by 2. And that gives us the two solutions. One solution is x equals negative 3 plus the square root of 14 over 2. The other one is, is x equals negative 3 minus the square root of 14 over 2. The two solutions of our quadratic equation. And notice that it now has a radical in it, so therefore we have an irrational solution. But it's the solution, it's a real solution, and that is what it is.